Hello friends and family, thanks for joining me. As always, I'm still striving to become fluent in the Igbo language of Nigeria, the ancestral tongue on my mother's side of the family. Uh, so I'm still on the topic, part two that is, of school in the Igbo language of Nigeria. Of course, I feel that this is a very important module to learn because school will come up in many conversations just from being human, uh, English and Igbo, being no exception. So again, how to pronounce school would be Ola Akwokwa, which means school in the Igbo language of Nigeria. Again, you break it down as Ola, which means house, and Akwokwa, books. House of books means school in uh, the Igbo language of Nigeria. Ola Akwokwa, school. So in this lesson, I'm going to go through items 26 to 50, and thanks for taking this journey with me. I've been studying a little less than 11 months right now, so I still consider myself very much a rookie, um, but still trying, and if it takes years to learn, that's what I'll do in order to be fluent in the language of my ancestral tongue. So we're gonna start with item 26 today, which would be construction paper. Construction paper would be akwokwa nwube. That's akwokwa nwube which would be construction paper. And if I have the literal translation, I'll give it to you. And in this case, I do have it. It would be akwokwa, which would be in this case, paper. And mwube, which means construction. So again, with Igbo, just like a lot of languages in the world, probably most languages, you give the subject and then you give the description after the fact. Unlike English, that gives the description, then the subject, the total opposite. So again, so this would be akwokwa, which means paper, mwube, which means construction. So you're saying paper for construction or construction paper. Again, akwokwa mwube, construction paper. Crayon would be crayano, crayano, crayon. Another way that you can uh, describe a crayon in Igbo would be two words, which describes also a pen and other writing utensils. You can also say, un pc o de, un pc o de can also be used for crayon or pen. You know, it works that way too. And that word is, is broken down as follows. Un pc means stick and o de means writing. So you're basically saying stick for writing, which is a crayon in this case. Or use the other word, which would be crayano for crayon. Crayano, crayon. Oche would be for desk. Oche, desk. Okay, dictionary. Now, you'll notice that throughout this lesson that you'll keep hearing that word aquoqua, which in depending on your context, can either mean paper or book. So it just depends on the context. But in dictionary, it's going to mean book. So to say dictionary, you would say, Akwokwa inkawa okwu. Akwokwa inkawa okwu for dictionary. And again, this will break down as akwokwa, which means book, and you're describing what type of book with the next word. So it'd be inkawa okwu. In kawa would mean dictionary, and okwu would mean word. So you're basically saying a, a book that is a dictionary of words, or a book that actually describes words, okay, which is a dictionary. So again, that's akokwa in kawa okwu dictionary. Okay, diploma, the only word I found for it sounds similar to the English would be diploma. Diploma for, dic uh, for dip diploma. Again, it's dipl diploma for diploma. Let me get it right because I keep stuttering when I say it. Diploma for diploma. Again, diploma for diploma. Okay, dividers. When you want to separate papers in a folder, for instance, I would be ihe in kewa. Ihe in kewa for dividers. And that word ihe just means an item. 
and you're describing what type of item you're talking about, in kewa. So it's an item that divides. Or, in simple in English, it's divider. So again, it's ihe in kewa dividers. Ihe in kewa dividers. Okay, dormitory. Uh, there are boarding schools over in Nigeria. I have the privilege to being on one uh, the last couple years at the Nigerian Christian Institute in Uyo in Akwaibom State. And they had a dormitory, which they called it a hostel. And so the order to say a dormitory where the students would live, you would say, Ola Obibi. Ola Obibi for dormitory. And again, those words break down in a literal sense. Ola means house and Obibi means to live in. So on a school campus, the house to live in is Ola Obibi, uh, which in our case, in English, we would call it dormitory. Again, Ola Obibi dormitory. Easel, just the um, frame to do presentations on would be Isolo, Isolo for easel. So again, Isolo, easel. Now, we're, we just did a description of um, a dictionary. Now, it's going to do a description of what an encyclopedia would be in the Igbo language. Now, this one I cannot break down in its uh, literal sense, so I'll just go ahead and pronounce it. as Akokwa Inka Ihe Amoma for encyclopedia. I'll say it slower. Akokwa Inka Ihe Amoma for encyclopedia. One more time. Quokwa inke inka. Let me start again. A quokwa inka ihe amoma encyclopedia. A quokwa inka ihe amoma encyclopedia. English. I did find two words. Now remember, just like American English, you have dialects all over the place in Igbo land in Nigeria. Just like a person here in the United States doesn't sound like the same if they're from Georgia as if they are from Michigan, as if they're from California. Different regions have different dialects. Uh, and in some cases, it seems like different accents, just like here in the United States. Uh, so in English, um, excuse me, in Nigeria, it's the same thing when it comes to uh, the Igbo language. So the what we call the central Igbo one, meaning the one that's most accepted by everybody for the word English is Beke. Beke for English. Again, Beke for English. But in the Anambra dialect, which is one of the dialects, of course, of Igbo land in Nigeria, in Southeast Nigeria, you may hear somebody say Oyibo. Oyibo also means English. So you have one or two ways of saying it. Again, Beke, which would be the more universal one, Central Igbo, or Oyibo in the Anambra dialect. Eraser would be inchicha, inchicha, eraser. Again, inchicha for eraser, inchicha, eraser. Exam is ule, ule, exam. Again, ule, exam. An experiment, which actually I enjoyed in school, uh, would be inwale experiment. Inwale experiment. One more time. Inwale experience experiment. Flashcards would be flashy kadi. So again, the uh, words are the opposite order that you'd have in English. Well, no, actually, they're the same in this case. Let me say it correctly. Flashy is flash and kadi is cards. So you're saying flashy kadi for flashcards. So again, flashy kadi flashcards. Folder is folda. Folda is folder. Folda, folder. Okay, geography would be pronounced as Adidiala for geography. Again, that's Adidiala geography. Two words, 
Adidi, which means form, and Allah means earth. So you're saying the form of the earth, which means geography. Adidi Allah, geography. To say globe in Igbo would be Owa globe. Owa globe. Again, Owa globe. That letter that looks like a U with a dot underneath it, you pronounce it just like an O in English. So, Owa globe. A glossary uh, would be described as the following in Igbo. It would be Oku Inkawa. Oku Inkawa glossary. And the root words on this one will be Oku, which means words. And inkawa, which means described. So you're saying words as they're described, which means a glossary, which would be in the back of a book. So again, it would be oku inkawa glossary. Again, oku inkawa glossary. Glue almost sounds the same in Igbo. It's glue for glue. Glue for glue. Almost you're just basically holding... Uh, the last syllables uh, to make it uh, sound like the Igbo language, which it is the Igbo language. is glue for glue. Glue for glue. Okay. Glue stick. So to say glue stick, you would say mp. Again, glue stick will be mpc glue. So again, mpc stick and glue glue. So again, you said opposite. Stick glue for glue stick. So, un PC glue, glue stick. Okay, almost to the finish line here. And so you would have for grades, grade D for grades. Grade D, grades. In gym, I cannot literally break down, but the words for it will, would be umbati aho, umbati aho would be Jim. Okay, Headmaster is a little bit more involved according to my book um, because you have several words that you have to say for Headmaster. Now, in the United States, we don't use the word Headmaster. That's more for British and for the Nigerian tongue. But to s Headmaster basically means in the United States, a principal of an elementary school. So don't confuse that. So basically what you're saying is principal of an elementary school, but it's more internationally known as headmaster. The book tells me to pronounce it is La Akokwa Inke Primari. Again, that's Onyi Sio. Let me get it right. Onyi Sola Akokwa Inke Primari. So again, just slower. Onyi Sola Akokwa Inke Primari. And that's again headmaster, meaning a principal of an elementary school in the United States. And it comes from the root words onye, which means to be a person. So onye means person. Isi means head. Ola means house. Akokwa means books. So stopping just at those four words, what you just said was. The person that's the head of the school. Remember, Ola Akokwa means house of books or the school, to keep it short. Then NK means that is, and primary means primary. So again, to break it down, then what you're basically saying when you say it in English, you're saying the person that's the head of the, sc of the school that is primary or primary school. So again, let me get, try to get it right in my pronunciation. It's one of the more difficult ones to say for me. So forgive me when I stumble on it a little bit here, but it's Onyi Sola Akwokwa Inke Primari, headmaster or principal in an elementary school in the United States. Okay. All right. History is a little more involved as well. A little more difficult for me to pronounce. It takes a lot of pr uh, practice for me to get it out, but... Uh, it would be pronounced Akoko Ihe Merihe. Nope, I said it incorrectly. Let me start, try that again. Akoko Akoka. Say it one more time. Akoka Ihe 
May Ray May. That's how you do it. Okay. Akoka Ihe May Ray May. That's how you say history. And it's broken down as follows. Akoka, which means story. Ihe means items. May Ray Ame actually means historical facts. So you're saying story of items of historical facts. And again, this is one of those words where when you see the last two, mayre and ame, you run them together. So you drop one of the vowels in Igbo. It's called vowel dropping. Uh, so that's why it's not pronounced mayre, ame. It's actually pronounced mayre, me. Because uh, you're dropping one of those vowels. Just like we do again with uh, contractions in the United States. Instead of saying do not, sometimes we say don't. And so you drop in some of the word, uh, the letters in there to say don't instead of do not. So it's the same thing in Igbo. All right, so let's try it one more time. It's akoka ihe meire me for history. Okay. Last one before uh, ending the video today, and hopefully next week I'll go ahead and do the third part of this video. Just try to keep it a little bit shorter now. But for homework, you would say ihe omume, ihe omume, which is homework. And again, that breaks down. Ihe just means item, and omume means practice. So you're saying item to practice in the context of school means homework. It can also mean assignments. The same words are used for it. So again, to say homework is ihe omume, which is homework. So again, thanks for taking the journey with me. Again, I'm just very much a novice. At the Igbo language, just a student trying to learn my ancestral culture as well as language that was strip, stripped from us here in, in the African-American experience over the years. But again, many of us, just like me, are determined to say, hey, you're not going to get away with it. We're going to learn our culture and we're going to speak our language, no matter if it has been prohibited in the United States for so many different, different years and centuries. Our love and appreciation is with you. God bless you and uh, have a good day. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.